there were two astonishingly embarrassing interviews for Mr. Johnson yesterday, only only one of which occurred in this studio. Seriously, I, Boris Johnson car crashes are like buses, aren't they? You wait years for one to come along, and then, then two come along at the same time. But the other one, um, the one in which he spoke about buses, actually really interested me because of what he said in... 2013 about what you do when things aren't going so well. I'm going to read it to you in its entirety and then we'll get stuck into the conversation about so-called health tourism. This is Boris Johnson in 2013. Are you paying attention at the back? Wake up. Let us suppose you are losing an argument. The facts are overwhelmingly against you. And the more people focus on the reality, the worse it is for you and your case. Your best bet in these circumstances is to perform a manoeuvre that a great campaigner describes as throwing a dead cat on the table, mate. That is because there is one thing that is absolutely certain about throwing a dead cat on the dining room table. And I don't mean that people will be outraged, alarmed, disgusted. That is true, but irrelevant. The key point, says my Australian friend, is probably Linton Crosby, uh, the key point, says my Australian friend, is that everyone will shout, "Geez, mate, there's a dead cat on the table. That is the last time I will do an Australian accent this morning. And don't send me text saying it wasn't an Australian accent. It was South African or Welsh or something else. That's missing the point. Geez, mate, there's a dead kid on the table. Uh, in other words, they will be talking about the dead cat, the thing you want them to talk about. And they will not be talking about the issue that has been causing you so much grief. Boris Johnson, 2013. Boris Johnson yesterday somehow managed to not not overshadow, but certainly to distract attention from his appalling interview with Nick Ferrari, in which it emerged almost certainly that the photograph of him with his alleged girlfriend now, I'm afraid we have to say, Carrie Simons, that appeared in, in newspapers and had allegedly been provided to said newspapers by people close to Boris Johnson, it, it, almost almost certain that that was taken weeks before the altercation at her flat that saw Boris Johnson um, come to the police's attention. So distracting attention from that, more pertinently perhaps for people who prefer their politics pure rather than riddled with personality defects, withdrawing attention from the fact that he has not explained and probably won't be able to steer the ludicrous kamikaze Brexit that he's now pretending to favour through our sovereign parliament. Those are the two things that we should have been talking about yesterday. And I appreciate that most of you don't spend your life glued to social media, but if you did spend most of yesterday immersed in the political ends of social media, you'd have seen a claim that he likes to relax by making models of buses out of cardboard boxes, drawing a lot more attention than either the absence of any policy or explanation or plan with regard to a kamikaze Brexit, or the fact that he appears to have colluded in the deception of the British public by allowing a photograph designed to suggest that there'd been a rapprochement and a reconciliation between him and the girlfriend who screamed, get off me, at him shortly before the police arrived at her flat at the end of last week. Said photograph had in fact been taken several weeks previously. But I know, I know, a lot of you like being lied to, and I don't know, I don't know what to do about that. 